fighting my na- no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, there are certain things that even though I am super excited and hyped for Mortal Kombat 1, just like I'm sure all of you are, there are still things that I have some concerns about. Let's be realistic here. The, you know, there's there's some things we don't have the answers to yet because we've gotten so little information that hopefully we'll get more information soon that will alleviate all of these concerns. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to go over the five biggest concerns that I have going forward right now that I would love to get information on. Now, before we get into those five, I would greatly appreciate it that if you're liking the content I'm putting out, make sure to leave a like. If you are excited for Mortal Kombat 1, like this video so that way other people can check out this content. I greatly appreciate it. It's a very small gesture on your part. It just takes two seconds, but it does so much help for me and my channel. So thank you on that regard, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, because if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, you're not going to want to miss any of the content that we're putting up multiple times a week. So that being said, let's talk the concerns. All right, the, the five concerns. Uh, <laughs> so number one, crossplay. We don't know what the status is of crossplay. So when the site first went up, in the FAQ section for Mortal Kombat 1's website, it said that crossplay will not be supported at launch, but would be added after the fact. What does that mean? When? We have no idea. But then they took it down. Like within maybe seconds or minutes, they took that part of the FAQ section down. So we have no real, we have nothing to go off of. And if you're not familiar with what crossplay means, that means people on PS5 can play with those on Xbox Series S and X, and can play with those on PC. Everybody can play together, basically. You're not segregated into your different consoles of choice or platform of choice. So that is huge because you want to make sure to maximize the player base. If you have a friend that has an Xbox and you have a PS5, you want to be able to play together. If you have, uh, if you're on PC and everybody else is getting it on consoles, then you're not going to be able to play with them like it was with MK11. You know, they eventually added crossplay for between console to console, but PC players were still out on their own little island, and that really sucks. As a PC gamer, I really hope that crossplay is across all platforms and maybe not Switch. We don't know what that's going to look like, but at the very least, PS5, Xbox Series S and X and PC need to all be able to play together. So I'm hoping we get an answer sooner rather than later in regards to what's going on with that. So crossplay, that is my biggest concern. One of my biggest concerns right now is just being able to play together. I don't want to have to purchase multiple copies. And quite frankly, I don't even own uh, next gen consoles or current gen, whatever you want to call them. So what does that look like? So that's a huge, huge issue that I think they really need to push hard to get that at launch. Next up, number two would be the cameos. What is going on with the cameos? We don't really have any information on this. It's got everybody worried. Is my favorite character going to be a cameo? Yeah, we don't know if playable characters can be cameos. Um, I think there's uh, hints out there on, on the internet without going into detail that player playable characters could be a cameo, but it's not a guarantee that all of them on the initial roster will have them at launch. So there's some confusion about cameos uh, in terms of playability. You know, if a, if a character is a cameo at launch, let's say Cyrax is a cameo at launch, does that disqualify him from being a DLC playable character for this game down the line? Or is it the opposite? If he's a cameo at launch and everybody is using him a lot, does that mean it's more likely that he becomes a DLC character because they they see that this character is popular and people want to use him in the game? Or is it going to just mean playability in a future game based on those metrics? Which, if that's the case, then eh, I don't want to wait four years for my favorite character to become playable, especially because we've been wait you know what, I could go on a whole tangent. But that being said, we don't know anything about cameos. What is it going to actually look like? Are they just going to pop on screen and do a move and then leave? Do you only have certain numbers, like limited quantities of them like marvel versus capcom one where certain cameos you can use five times in a match certain ones you can only use two or twice so there's a lot of uncertainty based on cameos so that's something that i think people are really curious about learning more about the third concern i have is story mode 
are we getting a conquest? Are we getting the same chapter system that we've been getting the past several games since DC versus DC 9, X, 11? They've always followed that same pattern in terms of story mode, but people have been really asking for conquest and super excited with Street Fighter 6 getting their own kind of world tour conquest like mode. Ed Boon doing a lot of hinting on Twitter. Are we getting a conquest mode? The website doesn't mention anything about conquest, but it does say immersive story. Immersive to me means it feels like it's more engaging throughout versus watching a cutscene, then doing a few fights, and then watching a cutscene, doing a few fights. That doesn't feel as immersive as running around in a world, you know, like conquest. So I'm hoping that there's some sort of conquest like mode in the game, but we don't know. So that's another concern is are we getting are we getting story? How is it going to be presented? And on another layer of story, are we going to, like, what kind of changes are we looking forward to? Are we going to get great changes? Is the story going to be well written? Because I think that's so important. If we're going to start fresh, clean slate, fresh canvas, the whole shebang, we need characters that are written extremely well. You know, if you want to change certain bad guys to be good or good guys to be bad, or change their origins up, their relationships, their roles, as has been mentioned, is going to be the case, then you need to stick the landing here because we are building a new foundation for a new trilogy or beyond. I would like to think that we stick with this universe going forward for as long as as long as we possibly can, and we're not just getting a reboot every three games, you know? So, yeah, it's very important that they handled this with extreme care and caution and really build that foundation to be solid so that way we're not retconning you know characters from game to game this is a clean slate so let's do everything super well so that way when the next mortal Kombat game comes around we're not just changing up characters in between games we no longer have chronica or time manipulation as a built-in excuse of why things are changing and why we're not being consistent with characters backstories um, going forward so Yes, uh, story. That is hugely important. Next up is even more important, and that is the gameplay. What does this gameplay play like? Is it going to be like MK11? Is it going to be like MKX? Is it going to be like MK9? Or is it going to be something completely different? We know next to nothing on the gameplay, and that is absolutely crucial to this game's success and longevity is how fun it is. If the game isn't fun to play, then nobody is going to care about anything else within the game. The roster could be amazing. The story can be great. It could have fun little side modes, but if it doesn't have fun core gameplay, just the one-on-one gameplay or whatever, the online gameplay, if the actual game isn't fun to play, then people are just going to move on to something else. So I'm I'm hoping that the gameplay is going to be really solid. I favored 9 and X over 11, and I feel like that's a pretty popular uh, opinion, stance to take, is that most people preferred the gameplay of 9 and X over 11. Not to say that people didn't like 11 to some degree, but yeah, I'm hoping for something more akin to 9 or X. I would imagine it's going to be something completely new and unique in its own right, but I'm hoping for it to be most similar to 9 or X in, in regards to the gameplay. So that is insanely important, and I and I think I I would imagine we're getting gameplay very soon, as soon as at the showcase events, the PlayStation showcase events on Wednesday, this Wednesday, or it could be at Combo Breaker, or it could even be at Summer Games Fest, or hopefully we get something at all three. But yeah, I think the gameplay is insanely important and the most crucial aspect of all of this. Um, And then my final concern to discuss or share are the Dragon Crystals. So in the special editions, it mentions Dragon Crystals, which is a in-game currency of sorts. And we have no idea what this is going to be. Now, I'm assuming there's going to be live service elements like Eleven had. They had their own resources in Eleven, like the little time shards and time crystals or whatever stuff like that, uh, along with various other forms of currency. This time we're getting dragon crystals. What are those going to be used for? And the wider topic here is how are we going to unlock things? What's going to be unlockable? How much of a grind is this going to be? And how much is it going to demand of our time? 
I've talked in the past about how I really hope this game respects the player's time. It doesn't mean everything needs to be unlockable within like an hour or anything crazy like that. Um, but it does need to allow us to unlock the things that we do want to unlock in a reasonable time frame. People have, you know, full-time jobs, full-time students, other games they want to play. And I feel like more and more recently over the last half a dozen years, games have started to really demand that this be the game that you spend all your time on. And that's just not realistic. And if anything, it's going to put more people off than it does on to your game. So I'm hoping these Dragon Crystals, remember, this is a full price game. So you can't compare it to something like Fortnite or Call of Duty's Warzone or Rocket League. Um, this is a full priced retail game, not just full price. This is $70 because it's next gen. So if you're going to charge that amount, then you can't have the free to play live service elements where you're demanding people just grind, 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 grind to get these, these in-game currencies to spend on these items or to spend in the shop for microtransactions. And I say microtransactions because oftentimes it's not micro anymore. So yes, please, I'm hoping these Dragon Crystals aren't very egregious and they don't get in the way of the enjoyment of the game itself. I want to, every ideally, we just have all the unlockables for characters that are all quality and they don't feel padded out just for the sake of having like 300 items per character with very, like very small differences. Hopefully all the unlockable items are very unique and worth obtaining and you are able to get the things you want within a reasonable time instead of having it be random. No random crypt or anything like that. So yeah, the Dragon Crystals are a concern. So yes, crossplay, cameos, story, gameplay, Dragon Crystals, those are my concerns currently for this game. Now, what are your concerns? What are your thoughts on these concerns? Let me know in the comments below how you're feeling about this game and what are your worries or concerns right now? And that's okay, There's I'm not being pessimistic or negative i am super hyped for this game i'm super excited for this game these are just the things that i really need to know more about um, to hopefully alleviate those concerns but yes let me know what you're thinking in the comments below make sure once again to leave a like on the video it greatly helps me as well as subscribe if you're a mortal kombat fan you're not going to miss any of the content i'm putting out weekly uh, live streams as well where we play all the Mortal Kombat games um, me and some buddies here on the channel as well as we do podcasts long form hours long where we deep dive discussion of all things past and future of Mortal Kombat as well as all videos like this where I'm going to be covering Mortal Kombat 1 pretty much on the daily as we get the information so on that note I'll see everybody very soon